with all my heart hate chota beam and i know hate is a strong word oh my god <laughs> the whole thing is women usually are not taught there that you can do something more even my mom has taught me that you're for a man you're to like make babies and this guy was in love with me and i'm just like yo why would you be in love with me i am not in love with me <laughs> but you live in a village yo you can't do grand gestures here people shoot you dead if they get to know you're in love or what something of that sort there, there was this one guy though who was just like uh, he spoke to me and everything and he just goes up don't fall in love with me okay my broski don't worry <laughs> that's one thing i would never do and i do consider like two to two to three people as my very close friends uh but i don't have this whole idea of best friend and i have to reach out to you if i have to talk to you or something whoever's telling money does not bring you happiness this is a lie is rida single obviously you are single <laughs> is rida ready to mingle what's the weirdest dm you have ever received a dick pic So welcome to yet another episode of Unset Feelings with Shanky. And today we are back again at Taper Fox Studios which has always been supportive in creating and helping us to shoot our content. If you are looking for something like that, don't hesitate to hit them up. And with that, today's guest is none other than Rida Tharana, a woman who wants to change this world for the good, breaking stereotypes and talking on behalf of all those girls and women out there who are trying hard to make it to this real world and this is not an interview it's a conversation that we all need to have in our own families let's welcome to that so hi rida so hi shanky How are you? I am doing absolutely amazing. How are you? I'm doing great like always. You look so pretty. Thank you so much. I told you this backstage as well. You look so pretty. <laughs> you look handsome. I love your jeans. You need to give me the link and the shoes too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Rida, first of all, I'm sure like all your followers are so excited to watch this. Okay. They've been waiting for something like this for very long. You guys are amazing to be frank. I I always constantly keep thinking if I deserve any of them. and then i'm just like how did i end up with such an amazing following and such amazing people on board and every time i meet them it's crazy because they don't come up with oh you're so pretty or you're so beautiful they always have stories to share that i felt confident or i made my first salary this is something i gifted myself i got this for my parents and it's just beautiful that you're able to get something out of what i make and i never thought i was i could inspire them in any way so yeah it means the whole world to me now I along with all of us we want to know who is Rida. We know who is Rida on Instagram, online and everywhere that we've been seeing you. But what's your back story? Um uh, I think I am a village girl. I come from a very small village in Coorg called Chennaiyana Kote. It's called Chennaiya the King and his Kote. Wow. But definitely it's not like a whole palace kind of situation. It was like a place right i'm born in kerala so oh, my wow. mom's from kannur and my dad's from coorg and i was born in kannur but obviously they got me right after that and what i like about coorg is it's beautiful you know everybody in bangalore knows that one place that you have to go to or one place that you need to visit yeah. is coorg everybody is going there on weekends yeah. everybody is exploring where to go what not to go but as growing up i think i loved everything about that place my Uh, I can say my family was a little open-minded that way, especially yeah. my father. Uh, even though most of my fellow mates, especially of my age, uh, and as well as I come from a very Muslim Orthodox family, most of them were sent to government school, saying that you know what, you're a girl anyway. Eventually, you'll be married off. So, what's oh. the point of investing so much money in your education or sending you to a convent school? And one of the things I like about is my father not seeing it the same way. Even though he had three girls, he never really said that okay i have three girls or something of that sort and he sent us to the convent school we were having a really nice childhood my childhood probably might be the best thing ever wow. you know we used to climb coffee trees during the coffee harvesting season we'd be helping mother to pluck them we'd get like 50 paisa for doing that <laughs> job um even though it was like 1998 is when i was born it's still a village so it took everything took time for it to come so we had big antennas to watch tvs wow. and internet still took time we had flip phones i had motorola i had nokia and had all of those things i don't know a lot of them say i'm a millennial a lot of them say i'm a gen z but i think i've got on a blend of both because it took time 
uh, for things to come oh, down okay. there. And uh, we still had lanterns when we were studying, like you know, those glass lanterns and things of that sort. It shared beds with our cousins and, uh, you know, go to other people's estates, oh, steal oranges during pepper <laughs> season. We are, we are there. And we had goats and cows and rabbits and chicken and ducks. And uh, I don't think I would have asked for a childhood otherwise. We've, wow. we've done everything. I mean, like a mom would be like, just go get that and get this and things of that sort, right? But I think the reality started hitting me after I hit uh, my puberty. And also when I was like 14 and 15 is when people around me started seeing me for my gender. And because you're raised in a place where you're, you know, you're meeting your brothers and you're meeting your sisters, your affection with your father and your mother. My mother was very strict. My father was always out. He was abroad. He was working. So my mother took a role of um, everything. You know, she was extremely strict and uh, we were scared of her. She'd just give me this eye and I'd be like, asking <laughs> permission from my mom was a task. Like I would see her as the dawn or the the villain right you, know, you you always see that good cop bad cop situation yeah, in yeah, parents yeah, yeah. my mom was the bad cop as of now when i look look at it i feel like my personality and my upbringing plays a major role from her but when i was a kid i really did not like her i really um, despised her i really despised her upbringing and i really questioned everything that she did but now I look back and I'm like oh god I'm so grateful to have her as my as my mom so uh I was just a normal kid but you know I did not have a metropolitan life so I did not know Hannah Montana I did not watch any of what the are TV you saying? yes it was too when I came to Bangalore and all of my friends used to talk about these shows I just did not know what to say because I never watched any of those I do know the Kelly tubbies though because yeah. of the of the big antennas and the dish is what we used to call dish TVs uh, DD National was the DD only National thing that would there. play so it was right. just the dance programs and Kelly tubbies here and there and then Chota Bheem we were forced into it because we were living <laughs> in a joint family and my uh, aunt had a had a baby girl who was my god I don't know how was she a villain at that time she was a little <laughs> baby but then you know we were like it's baby so we used to fight for the TV all the time and she she would get to watch it all the time and she would always watch Chota Beam. I, with all my heart, hate Chota Beam. And I know hate is a strong word. Oh my God. Oh my <laughs> I God. hate it. So, what, oh, like, I know everything. Why? Okay? But why? Because so, so the thing is, we did not really have English channels to watch or something of that sort. And the whole idea of having... Disney Channel, all these shows made for kids was a taboo. Like, if you're a kid, you're to, you're to watch cartoons, right? Right. Why would you correct, watch correct. all of these things? Oh, my God. I was forced to watch it. And every time we would take a remote, then her mother would come. She would fight with us. And my mother would come. She would fight with her. <laughs> and then they'd be like, Rida is the reason all of this is happening. Like, I am the reason most of the times they've had fights for. There are reasons where, you know, because the house was divided. Okay. It was a joint family. We lived in the middle of the estate and we had to walk through the fields to go for go the, to the uh, yeah to the main road for the school, for our buses, everything for that okay. matter. Okay. And it was now divided because my uncle got married and the wife did not like us. So it was a very old house. When I say old house, it was made out of mud and uh, we had tiles. So during summers and all, it's like beautiful though. And so we had like everything around us. We, we've been raised that way and now the house is divided now we have two kitchens and um, even the way we would heat up waters is through firewood like put up firewood and oh burn God. it and then pani garam hota and then you go and take a correct, shower correct. and then my aunt would take off the firewood because she's like I don't want to waste my firewood I want to use it for tomorrow and then we would use our f- it was just chaotic oh <laughs> no, when you I was it. always the reason for the fight Okay, but I was a little girl and I'd be like take the water why would you take my pot and then like, why would you take her pot then my mother would come how can you talk to my daughter and I'm like yes mom tell her, <laughs> tell her that and then she'd look at me she's like oh you're the reason I'm just like oh my god the things I have done I was in class 5th I remember climbing uh, a chiku tree I, I climb trees like a spider Okay, I can climb trees like anything. Coconut can you still the, do it? Yes, coconut is the only tree that I can't. But because we used to like pluck coffee and then pluck oranges and pluck a lot of things. Like if you have slight branches, I can easily climb trees. So it was always like, you know, I remember climbing that tree and I'm dancing on the branch. I don't know why I would do that. Okay, <laughs> And I fall and I put my hand, my left hand is the one who's taking all of my pressure because my whole body's pressure is on this. My bone literally dislocates. Okay. This bone goes here. This bone goes here. The oh support my. you have on your elbow, God. there's no bone. So it's shaking. And I'm just like, don't tell mom. 
We'll what are you this saying? Out. We'll figure this out. Do not tell mom. Because that woman was the scariest thing in my life at that time. Okay. <laughs> I love her with all of my heart right now. Yes. But at that time, I was just like, mom, no way. And my sister was like, no way. What are you saying? You know, we have to tell this to mom. And because dad was coming from Dubai at that time. So mom's really excited that dad's coming. And everybody's preparing for it and everything. And right before this, I break my hand. And you're standing there with your broken yeah, hand. Yeah. And because I'm so scared of mo- mom... I I don't feel the pain. I'm entirely numbed. But my sister's like, this is not, you know, this does not look okay at all. We really need to like go and tell this to mom. So she goes, she tells mom that, you know, I think you have to come see Didi. She comes, she looks at me. She looks at the hand. She looks at Huda. Now she can't slap me because I have this. No, she slaps Huda, okay? So Huda is like, has a couch like this and she's sitting, she sits with a thud on the couch and she doesn't move. She's like, I didn't even do anything. I don't know why am I beaten for all of these things. Oh my God, my childhood was... Huda, I feel so sorry so, for you. Oh, she still counts on me for that. Like, <laughs> I I was a... I, I don't know. I was a mess back then. There were so many things I've done. Like if you have a podcast with Huda, she'll give you like a whole series of why she's traumatized and why she's taking therapy because of me. Oh my okay? God. Oh my <laughs> but I was also a child. I was just coping up in my own ways. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say that I'd be the, the reason. Like As a mature person now, I realize. But at that time, I was just figuring out things that could work. So my childhood was like really fun. We had done so many things. There's so many stories like, that I can sit and tell you. And every time I take people to Kurg and show them places I know what I did here, what I did there, you know, taking leaves as money and everything of that sort. But it really started changing after my puberty. And everybody around me would get engaged by the age of 16. They were married at the age of 18. Are you um, serious? Yeah, it was still a very orthodox place and now your legal age has changed but the legal age at that time was 18 so you just get engaged by 16 where they are like oh you're surely going to marry this person or that oh person God. and the whole thing is women usually are not taught there that you can do something more even my mom has taught me that you're for a man you're to like make babies and that's it so and also when you come from a lower middle class or a middle class family for that matter you're only taught to make money that can help you survive. Absolutely. Nobody has ta- taught you to be rich and amazing or something. Yes, everybody wants to be a doctor or an engineer. But because that as a job role fits you good. But money-wise, you're not really pushed to do anything better. And if you're a woman, never. Mm. And and every time you're doing something good, even now, it's like, this is exactly why you're not allowed to send women. See, now she has the attitude. Now she has that. It's because of the money. This is exactly why you don't allow them. Yeah. And it was so much on me. And I used to, I was not a fan of it because all the boys, my age, younger than me, older than me, everybody got like a set of different priority. They had the money that was saved for them was for their education. They'd get like the best things to do. Uh, I'm just like, why is it not fair? And, And I really felt I wish I were a boy so that I was able to get all of these things. And I was constantly in, oh, the amount of times I've heard Oh, you're three girls. What would you do about the dowry? And I think I've been age 10 or 15 when I started. Oh my God. 10 or 11 when we started listening to this constantly. And everybody would just keep asking my mother and my father. And then came the color. You know, why are you dark? Why is your sister fair? Why is your little one dark? And the thing was, you know, I would want to be fairer like my sister so that I thought that's the mark of being pretty. And my sister wanted to be dark so she'd feel like I don't want to be compared. I I really do not want to be compared. So all of this came in out of nowhere that the joy that place bought me, the joy that place made me feel, it it started going one by one, right? It started leaving me one by one and I realized I don't want to be here. But nobody in my family has ever gotten out of this place. None of my friends have ever gotten out of this place, especially if you're like a Muslim. Everybody who I know have have gotten engaged, have gotten married. Nobody I've seen has been like, I want to work or I want to do that. So how am I to get out of this place? How am I to, to even dream something like this is possible? So that's where I think a lot of things changed for me because I was like, I really need to plan this way ahead if I need to get out of this. Because if I am stuck here, not only me, but my sisters yeah, are going to be stuck here as well. <laughs> And I will not be able to do a thing about it because nobody has been able to do anything about this. So when was the first time you moved out from your... It was a whole plan. So my plan was to take a distinction in class 10th. Wow. Then I would take science. 
I took science. That was also in Kurg itself. So it was called Vidya Niketan PU College. So I did my schooling in a convent school called Lutz Hill Convent School. Then I scored around 89%. Uh, percent, and then I was like, mm, if you take distinction, that means you take science. Oh. <laughs> and then I, I know, but then I really wanted to take science. So I took science. I, I am bad at maths. Then I learned I'm <laughs> also bad at physics. And <laughs> you tell me you're bad, bad at bio as well, chemistry. I'm good at bio. I love bio. And because maths and physics were two things that was harder, I felt everything else quite easy though. So I would do something with it. So I did my first PU and second PU in Kurg itself. And then I started planning. And that's when I learned about genetics and biotechnology. So right. I realized that every other course is there in Kurg. You have colleges that is there in Kurg. But the problem is, everybody else who's done things there in Kurg, eventually your first year, second year you're engaged, third year you're married, fourth year you have, have a, baby. a baby. Okay? So I'm just like, Mm, no, no if i don't get out then i'm gonna be stuck i really am going to be stuck so that's how i laid the plan out i have no idea how i came up with this plan so i remember taking a distinction i said i want to take science i take science i start studying then i learn about genetics and biotechnology and i stick to it okay and my parents are like what are you going to do with this I'm like i'm going to be a scientist wow i'm going to make <laughs> medicines and i'm going to like change the world because what else can i say how else do i convince them because i myself have no clue what this course is going to lead me to okay i have no idea all i know is this course is not there in kurg so i have no other option but to go Ooh. out to bangalore mm. or to mysore but mysore was not in my list bangalore any day So um then they were like okay if you want to do it so my father was very uh protect not protective but supportive of it, of it and he had come and we were going through a lot of financial problems at that time so he had come from dubai during my i think from 7th to 10th he was running a mobile store here in bangalore in martali oh, okay but <clears throat> then amazon came and then online came so you know there's no point yeah. of having stores nobody's yeah. coming and buying sim cards nobody's coming and recharging nobody's coming and buying phones everything's happening online so his business crashed out of nowhere he came back and he started selling vegetables so i back in kurk in kurk so i remember we used to go to hasin get like things at times i used to be in the shop just to help him with all all those things but he really did not want to do that because it was not giving us enough to mm, take care of the, of the house in the meantime also take care of three girls as education right I'm glad he never stopped us and he never said okay it's this is not my cup of tea somehow still figured out to get a, get things done with us but my mother was constantly worried we were going through a lot of financial crisis and they were like if you decide to do this we have no money to do this why would you want to do this you know just and my mom constantly was like just get married and settle down i don't understand why you want to do this and do that you're causing a lot of trouble for your father you're only being selfish i can't believe and i'm so glad i was selfish though and It, i can't believe you're doing this way you're doing that way and she constantly kept saying that and when i decided to take the loan which i feel like schools need to start teaching more like mental health loans Absolutely. uh and accrued interest all of these things which is important in your day to day life these people never teach you but you do know something that's not there or never going to come out there so i finished my pu there and i said i want to do my graduation uh, here in bangalore and it was a lot of trouble though this is where you know there's this one reel i saw and i said what incident in your head about god keeps replaying in replaying or all the other or, or is the reason that you believe and i'll tell you why i believe in what i believe i'm not saying that i'm perfect and i'm not saying that i'm the most religious person alive i'm learning and i'm it's a it's a journey for me as well but my father was all on board he 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 was ready we'd gone to the bank we'd gotten the loan of 3 lakhs 3 lakh was the yeah. um <clears throat> uh, education fee it had also included mess fee not mess fee my hostel fee as well everything was going all fine and one fine night my mother somehow so i i was dating this one guy at that point of time okay i don't know why i was dating i was not even <laughs> in love but apparently because they said they are in love and then i thought i'm in love anyway <laughs> right this guy decided to go to the same college as i do in bangalore yup okay he decides to take the same course as i did okay his mother gets to know no and then his mother has some issues with him or something and he and he's and he thinks that the most movie and a heroic way to do this is to tell his mother that he's in love with me and that mother thinks <laughs> that i am the one 
who convinced him to be in love with me i'm like broski i have no time for all this <laughs> i am literally trying to convince my mom i'm literally trying to convince my mom if they could send me here and you and you think i'm sitting and planning here like how do i get this man to love me love you yeah. right i was planning how do i get this man to leave me <laughs> because this man was obsessed with me all right he would take the bus that i would take which at that time every the thing is right i don't know why did why did we not find that creepy and all of my friends were like oh my god this is so cute can't believe he would come how long were you dating him two years i guess two three years i don't know i don't remember any two years at least for sure oh my god okay and Vena. it was during college like the 10th during my 10th oh very smart though so i was in class 10th and i never really knew that i never felt pretty i i there were so many pretty girls in the in the school i was dark and i always tried to fit in i was not confident i was no i was not like, exceptionally good at studies but i was good i was not bad at either and this guy was in love with me and i'm just like yo why would you be in love with me i am not in love with me <laughs> <laughs> i don't understand this and then he would like slide in letters in silk and then put it in my lunch box and every time i open the lunch box there be like a big silk oh my God. and i'd open it and be like oh, there's a letter how did he put the letter in i'll tell you how did he put the letter in it's chocolate you take like a i'm so sorry you take like a small blade you take like an incision slightly okay. put the letter in so you don't really know how because when you're opening you just open it through right, the cut right, right? and so i'm smart. just like yeah i'm like so magical why is <laughs> magic not even smart right <laughs> i'm just like there is because i was also so underconfident i felt validation <laughs> through this i was like oh i will not find love this is <laughs> this is love for me <laughs> this is it <gasps> My god my life has been <laughs> he's sweet okay i'm not den- i we actually met recently though oh yeah yeah and he was but i think it was not the right time to be in love to be frank uh, and then so he would like put in letters everybody would just do this and that that this guy was obsessed with me and this guy had a fake account <laughs> on facebook on in, or good. on facebook or good where facebook, yeah. facebook um no not that old okay not okay. that old okay <laughs> facebook and where this guy would be <laughs> so this guy had a fake account okay i don't know why was i that dumb and this girl was something something and she's like hey i'm so he was going to a different college and i was going to a different college okay. i think he felt insecure about the fact that you're going to a different college than i am so he'd keep a check on me right this was a girl's instagram account and this girl and i became very close friends and she was like we go to the same college as your boyfriend does and oh he's God. very sweet this girl came and asked so it's basically like building a thing and telling him know that there are a lot of girls who wants your boyfriend but your boyfriend only wants only you wants <laughs> oh wow and, that is cute and, no <laughs> yeah. it's not because i would tell all of my secrets to this girl and this guy would come up the next day and he'd be like how oh, i'm just like how does how he do know, you know? This? how does he know this <laughs> and i could not and i just go back to this okay this guy had like a whole master plan planned up with it and this guy this girl would only talk about him he's so nice all he speaks is about you he's like the most beautiful person ever to exist he's obsessed with you you should not leave him ever and i'm like no i will not leave <laughs> <laughs> only to later realize that wait let me connect the dots everything i i talk to this girl goes how does this guy this know, guy know. only possibility if this girl is that guy you figured that out he did not After tell you that like yes oh okay tell me did you break up and then you figured no, that out no i'll tell you then what happens is mother gets to know this his mother starts calling me calling my mother okay now i get to and i'm already have told there was another incident all right so this guy is into grand gestures big time but you live in a village yo you can't do grand gestures here people shoot you dead if they get to know you're in love or what something of that sort Okay, I get it, speaking. but it is not that. No, it's easy bad. If they get to know that you're dating or somebody, they'll get you married to somebody else. They'll be like, "What is it, right?" Even I can't be like, "I am in love with him." He's of just the same age as me. What is he doing? What is he earning? How can I convince my parents that I want to marry this guy? There is nothing that I can do. And his mother hates me. His mother's like, "That girl, no way." Mera hoor sa chehra, mere hoor sa hoor se bete ke liye aisi kali chand, no way. Okay, she literally. despised me she hated me in every way so now i get to know this so i you know how the forwarding works like you forward that call to another number yes correct so i had call, forwarded all of my mom's calls to my number okay okay and she would call at 8 o'clock in the night and me huda and zoya we're all sitting together we're just like our heart is literally in our mouths because if mom gets to know this 
she will end us then dad will get to know this he will end us then the family will get to know this they will all end us they will get me forcefully married to somebody right and this one day i'm just calling and she's like your your daughter has done this to my son your daughter has done black magic to my son i'm like what black magic just because i'm black or brown or whatever this is does not mean i know magic <laughs> okay and then and i'm acting like my mom she's like your son is an asshole your son did this your son is no less your son came behind my mom and just telling this over and over again okay it was so bad my mom starts knocking on the door and i'm just like oh my god what do we do we just disconnect the call but somehow she does get the call my mom does speak to him my mom is like i got to know this and that uh and is like she tells it tells that to my dad and that becomes a topic of conversation and then they're like he so she calls up my mother and she goes My son is going to Bangalore so don't send your daughter to Bangalore. Oh my god. My son is doing the same to going to the same college. Don't send it send your daughter to the same college. My son is doing the same course. Don't ask your daughter. I'm like, "Bro, I wanted to go to the college. I did the research. I wanted to do that course and your son just kept nodding to whatever I said. How am I to pay these things?" Absolutely. Why am I going through the, all of these Shit. things, right? In the meantime, I'm trying to speak to him is like I realized how much I do not like indecisive men like i need you to have something of your own like Absolutely. do something for yourself i can't be somebody who who will tell you what to do and what not to do and he's the one who taught me that lesson okay and i was like see i real you're a man at the end of the day your mom is going to teach you and send you and get you educated anyway mm-hmm. can you please look for another college you can do it in bangalore itself and we'll figure out what we can do there but can you please look for another college so i'm able to like you know get into this he's like no I want to be in the same college as you. I want to do the same course as you. What are you saying? He would make me sit next to him even when we when we did end up in the college. And I used to and I used to hate it so much because I wanted to sit with my friends. Right. I wanted to be like the college girl. I don't want to be known as like this guy's Guy girlfriend, girlfriend or I don't want to be like obsessed with this person. Oh my god. And then that's how my mom convinced my dad out of nowhere he she goes you know she's dating this guy he's also going there how can we trust okay. her how can we believe her and and everybody who goes to bangalore they ha- have some or the other reputation it gets really hard to get them married and everything right my dad who was on board literally knocks on the door and he goes i don't want you to go to bangalore we we'll look for some college here you go there for 2 years and then anyways we'll get you married it's not a big deal you're a girl what big, what else can you really do there's okay. nothing more you can do hearing that from my dad really broke me because dad for me was everything you were like on yeah and he was he was somebody who was close to me he was the love of my you know you see dad for a lot of other reasons right he was also somebody who never discriminated now the discrimination started coming from him also i know he also was like what else can you do you're a girl you know he never did that and out of nowhere now he's doing all of these things so it was the month of ramzan as well and i remember fasting for like every single day and my only prayer was ya allah just send me to bangalore i'll figure everything out Everything. you know i don't need money i'm not asking you for anything i don't ask you for um i don't need a beautiful house i don't need love of my life i don't need literally anything send me to bangalore i'll figure everything out my prayer started with this my prayer ended with this every single day i would cry my eyes out and on the 27th day of ramzan 27th or 28th i guess my uncle they like got to know that you know i was going through a lot and he came to my father and he was like let her go i will take her responsibility i will take care of everything if that's what's required but let her go let her be and um, that's how he signed the papers the next day he came in he signed the papers i got my loan and uh, he came to drop me to the college and for next 5 years 6 years actually my parents never came to bangalore did you visit them I I kept going to Coorg obviously but they never came to Bangalore they never checked my college they never after I moved got finished my college also when I started living by myself they never came to Bangalore just recently last to last year last year actually is when when they came to Bangalore and they stayed with us and they were like we're really proud of you and things of that sort I which I feel is nice though I'm really glad because they were not checking up on me or they did not want to know they just we're like fine you're doing good you're doing fine mm-hmm. well and well and good enough but other, otherwise we're like completely cool with it but yeah and then um that's how six when i was 16 when i moved in 17 is when i started working i started working as an mc and I, yeah. as a promoter <laughs> and here and there it was like a but how did i break up with this guy um i got into it and he became extremely obsessive right but did he come to the same college yes he came to the same college he was in the same class he oh would get God. angry if i did not sit with him he would get angry if i did not pay him attention he'd be like why are you doing this and i did not know i had not 
nobody taught me how to say no i had not known how to say no i was a people pleaser and i thought that i'd hurt if i say no and when i f- what are you even saying if i did go alone to let's let's consider i would just take buses from kr puram to mg road i turn around and he'd be in the bus he was he following you everywhere everywhere and if i if i take my take a i used to take red buses at that time because i did not have a lot of money to like afford an airavat or something to go to home go home turn around and he'd be there and i'm just like you're kidding me there is no way that you know everything that i'm doing mm-hmm. and then i finally when i decided to break up as like this is not happening oh god the amount of things that this guy has done i think this is a story of every girl he's blackmailed me he made other people call me he was like if you go out uh, this is going to happen that is going to happen people don't like you people hate you and i was so scared i remember not getting out of my hostel for at least 3 4 weeks because i really thought somebody's on to me and uh, i get i used to get calls all the time my email was hacked no 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 this guy did not hack my email the next guy hacked my email it's a oh long my, story oh my god oh my god <laughs> the next guy had not just hacked my email he had he had my phone on track uh he had uh, a web whatsapp that had scanned my my whatsapp he had my instagram where he would keep removing like my followers every single time and i had what 3000 followers at that time i was not even a content creator he had all of my passwords and uh, he had also met my parents not <laughs> not as my boyfriend but as like a work the colleague the, yeah and um, oh my god that was the worst relationship that i could possibly ever be in it, it was for 8 months on and off and Yeah and then I broke up with this guy and this guy still kept calling me he's like oh there was this one time he sent me a picture of him in the hospital but not really his face though so I started crying I'm like it's because of me I can't believe this guy is in the hospital Shit. because of me I have to see him I have to meet him I love you too again we get <laughs> back into a relationship and then I was like wait something's not, not adding up but I only get to know this like later <sighs> <laughs> I I feel like every every girl has this one story where the person's either like cut their hand or Absolutely. is in the hospital or you know have been told that something's going to happen to you if I, if I'm not in your life or whatever but yeah these these people have definitely added a lot of character and personality into me where I'm now able to say no I'm very confident with what I want and I really really don't l- look if if I see and notice red flags I am I'm, I'm out of it How many relationships have you been in, Rida? Uh, so I was a very serious relationship kind of girl. I and I always am someone who looks for love, and I believe in love a lot. We all do. <coughs> 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 and uh, my first one was back in school. At, uh, first, my first PU and second PU. By while as I was in school, I was with him, and then I came here to Bangalore, and then I broke up. Then I was with another one for like eight months. Extremely toxic relationship. don't abusive as well then i was in a 3 year long relationship and probably you know even when i think about it it makes me like smile i i feel really bad that i did not work out uh and i really wish the best for him he's he's doing really well in his life right now but it did not work out and uh, we broke up but there's a sense of how do you say this you know you always have that one ex you have a soft corner towards Absolutely. he has yeah. that and then a uh, one two three then there was a long distance relationship i had with this one guy uh who was in yeah we were together for approximately a year and half close to two years and since last year i actively decided to be single i realized that you know um, it's not helping me in any way and i really want to be single and i think it has been the best decision of my life for sure yeah for sure we As can a, just see you we can see the glow on your oh face. i'm i'm now even when i when i do have people ask me i'm just like no <laughs> there's this there was this one guy though who was just like uh, he spoke to me and everything and he just goes oh, don't fall in love with me okay my broski don't worry <laughs> that's one thing i would never do i am not because i realized after i've decided to be actively single i've gone out with people it's not like i've not been out with people or something but i've actively told them that i am not looking for anything i don't want you to look for anything i'm not in a position to give or not even in a position to take at this point of time i realized that I am not a really right person to be in a relationship considering I have a tendency of hurting you more than I getting hurt. So even if you because I have zero expectations, so even if you give me like the coldest and coldest of shoulder because I'm not in that position, I will not be able to feel a thing. Correct. And I will have the tendency to return the same cold shoulder to you and if you are in love with me or if you have even the slightest of feelings, you you will get hurt. So I've like actively told all of these to people I'm just like no, I don't really really 
I'm at I'm not at that position so don't even look for it. So you've been in four relationships. Yeah, four, yeah, four mm. to five I guess. Five is a situation ship. Yeah, four. Four. Do you count situation ship as no. relationship? No, right? Give a situation ship to him not to me. <laughs> <laughs> so out of these four relationships, okay, what is that one thing you've learned being in love or just being in a relationship? One of the things that I've learned is you cannot change a man. if they do not choose to change all by themselves i can get you the sun and the moon and the stars i can be the perfect girlfriend i can be the wife material and if they still choose to not see me that way nothing i do can change that um and i realized that like you know men who are in love they automatically do things that they want to do for their women and i'm not saying it's it's like all the time yes it requires for you to be, to communicate and let each other know what you want and what you don't want but you know a man who's ready to change for you will change for you and mm-hmm. a man who is looking looking at you as an option or as like time pass will only give you more pain to lead on with absolutely i think rita being a man here uh, one thing i will tell you from our perspective that if we love a girl we will just love them yeah. you know there are no boundaries, boundaries to that attached to it. like i have been in relationships and not to boast here again but i've always been supportive not for myself but because i know i have dreams today i want to go big why won't you have your dreams mm-hmm, 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 right mm-hmm. so i always try to keep myself in their shoes and understand from that point of view that if i want things from my, for myself they would want things for themselves as well so it just automatically comes you don't even have to try hard to make things work things work for you yes. right when it you are in love, love it just have love it just it's you have to it's with the it's women with love also there is it's very rare that women usually slowly understand what they want and what they don't like i keep telling people you should see me in love everything i stand stand for shanky i am literally the opposite to it <laughs> <laughs> it takes me like a massive heartbreak to realize oh my god what a buffoon i was but you know that's that's the beauty of being in love and i actually now that i've been single i've been actively able to put myself first and be in love with myself and i don't think i have i have been this happy in my life even in a relationship for that matter but you're true though like when you're in love let that be any gender for that matter yeah. you just are a very different human and you and you tend to put them first and you just tend to do things that makes exactly. them happy exactly. you buy something and you're like oh what would she like or what would he like yeah. or maybe i should get this person here the next time and exactly. things of that sort right and i feel like maybe i have not found it but eventually, eventually. i'm i'm not i'm in no rush do 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 you think we all find love once in our lifetime do you do you believe in that i feel like you know i kept i i just said this to my mom yesterday and i said her i i was talk, we were talking to her and she was just telling me something about religion itself and i told her like you know my whole childhood you've taught me to be afraid of things our religion teaches us to be if you don't do this you're going to be you'll be there okay. like since i've started viewing my religion with love since i've started viewing god with love and i've started seeing in like you know as forgiveness and and seeing as this right it it has changed like even i told my mom as well 3 years before if i saw you i'd be like i don't want to be a mother like you or i i had i did not i was not really fond of you i could not share a thing with you now that i see you i see you with love and i see you right. with happiness i'm able to share things with you you're able to share things with me and a lot of things change the minute you see anyone in with love or in that feeling right love is just joy like i can just be like oh this plant is so pretty but right you're only able to attain it once you are in love with yourself and i realize it now because i am so fully comfortable with the way i am and what i do and what i'm able to offer what i'm able to bring to the table that when i start seeing other people i see it with immense love and what they're able to give or cater yes mm-hmm. i firmly believe that you know you all find love and if you don't find love you are the love you are the love it's it's as A- simple as that absolutely and how has your perception about love changed over the years because you've dated and i'm not just talking from the point of dating someone but i think the <laughs> love firstly starts from your own family <laughs> okay <laughs> and you have i know how much you love your sisters okay so how has love changed over the years for you uh i think you know the the whole condition especially when we live in india the first thing that we are taught about love is like it starts with family 
but it starts with you absolutely right and and i and <clears throat> it's not selfish you're able to just give more you're able to do better you're able to understand a person more when you know and understand yourself better because you're you're able to view yourself in that empathetic way you're able to see yourself in that way and it just nurtures you to be a better person and see the world in that way right. for me over the past few years it has changed love starts with me love is in everything Yes. love isn't the thing that you do like as you said i want to grow big i love doing what i do right yeah. now it's just basically when you, when something brings you joy there is an aspect of love in it right let that be food let that be your parents let that be a partner let that be yourself yes. let that be friends let that be a hobby let that be painting anything for mm-hmm. that matter if it's making you smile if it's putting you at peace if it's bringing you joy and if it's then there is love love there it's as simple as that it's it's only it gets complicated when you attach it to something absolutely you know you're like only this can bring me joy only this person can love me only this relationship is what's going to nurture me that's when you mess it up for yourself do that like attachments basically yes my i remember my therapist asking me to go and read attachment styles because i was telling her how i had my attachment towards my partners before this i was obsessed with my partners i would not eat if they did not eat i'd wait for them to come and their mood swings affected my mood swings i'd be walking around eggshells and all of these things and just like i wanted to go back and there are multiple videos on attachment styles to see what is the kind of attachment styles you have why do you have it and where it comes from right but yes you all have different attachment styles but once you kind of figure it out it's very easy to live life so how how so maybe you mentioned you were in those kind of attachments earlier so how do you say i think today every second person is attached to something okay it could be anything so how do you come out of those attachments if you want to end of the day uh i think with me the reason i was attached to let's say i used to r- 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 jump from one relationship to another relationship right. even though it benefited me or did not benefit me is because my f- my family was had detached my detached me in every way they were anyways waiting for me to fail so they could be like come back and we'll get you married right so i kind of wanted a sense of support or something from someone at that time i could not afford, afford therapy and i could not ask my sisters because they were going through things themselves my friends did not understand where i came from because your dynamics and your lifestyle is so much more different from the from the way they live or i live right so for me my attachment styles came from there i i realized the reason i'm dependent on them is because i am afraid to be alone and i really mm. want somebody around me all the time and i would do anything even though they were harming me in every way i would still do anything to keep this person and the way i was able to get out of it is to detach from people all in all like right now i live by myself um and people are always like how do you live by yourself do you not want to talk to people do you not <laughs> but the thing is i'm constantly see i have a podcast today i was shooting in the morning i was having meeting i usually don't get time for myself that's why i moved out because i'm like i really need time for myself and i enjoy being by myself i enjoy just sitting on my bed reading or taking a walk or running or cooking i love cooking and just just doing things by myself without anybody around and now when i do have people who are in my life I'm there for you if you want me to be there for you but I'm not dependent on you mm-hmm. or your mood swings does not affect okay. me or how you see me does not affect me it took a lot of time though but it is an active decision to know that this is my attachment style how do I work on this and why am I coming having these things communication communicating with yourself and literally isolating yourself into it and putting yourself in positions that you're not comfortable with is the only way you can get out of this okay. no amount of podcast or no no amount of uh, things will change it if you internally do not decide, decide that this is what you want to do absolutely so and when you talk about friendships okay and i know you have your best friend so how how does it change <coughs> things in your life having a friend and i'm not just talking about any random friend i think all of us we do have friends on a daily basis like we keep meeting people we keep making friends but then again end of the day you have that one friend you know who will always be there with you no matter what so how does that change in your life i actually don't i mean i feel like i'm going to get a lot of backlash from people my friends because i realize yeah. that i am their best friend but it's not necessary that i might have to feel the same thing okay. and i do consider like two to two to three people as my very close friends 
uh, but I don't have this whole idea of best friend and I have to reach out to you if I have to talk to you or something. My way of coping anything has been to be by myself. I'm able to do things way better when I'm able to cope up with myself. I usually cry out, I feel whatever it is and then I talk to people and I talk to multiple people at the same time. It's not just once or it's not just twice. It always has been like, okay, let me just talk to, I talk to this person. So the more I open up, so I have multiple people that I can open up to. What that has changed for me with friendship is I don't stick to just one person. I have right. a blend of different kind of friends. I have friends who are long distance. I have my sisters who are my best friends as well. Right. Um, I have friends who are in the industry who are creators as well. I have friends who are not creators when I travel I make a lot of new friends so I keep a blend of all of them some people are party free some people are not some people <laughs> like like so when I want to have that vibe I know whom to reach totally. out to some people are shopping some people are uh, into like pottery and some people are into painting so I've keep, kept like a blend of all of these things because I have you know I can reach out to them whenever there's a there's whatever that I want to do at that point of time but I don't believe in sticking to just one kind of people uh, but yeah have a circle that supports you that supports you that looks up to you that really loves you and admires you I think you're good to go good to it doesn't really have to be like one or the best person and I, 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 it is said that if you just surround yourself with those right three four yes. people I think you're just you're sorted in go. life you're good to go yes. and all the issues we have in life and we doubt ourselves a lot I think almost every day okay if you have those people with you you're you're sorted yes I think it just becomes because, very easy you know especially when you're in an industry like this you're constantly are comparing you're constantly do think that hey is this true what they're saying is true or not and when you have people like these they actually get sanity in your head and let you know that no you're just overthinking and this does not have to be true and with that, Rida, okay, one thing I really wanted to ask you always, that I have felt that myself, okay, and I really wanted to ask you, not for the podcast, but personally, that we, end of the day, we doubt ourselves with everything of how do we look, okay, today I apply nail paints, it is because I just love it. Okay, there's nothing else. Yeah, I, and I don't apply. I don't like it. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So, and there are people who will come on to you. Online, offline. I remember first day, Rida, the day I applied, only the black nail paint. Okay. My friends, trust me, my own friends who were staying with me in the same house, they told me, Shanky, don't do it. And today, they are doing it. <laughs> you influence them <laughs> so I think we have reached that stage maybe where okay we are so confident with ourselves that we know what is right what is wrong and we just love ourselves but there are still a lot of people out there who are not able to do such things so not able to believe in themselves and maybe every day they're getting backlashes okay you don't look pretty your skin color is that you are too heavy and all of those things so how do people deal with that how do they come out of that so usually doubting yourself see I read this on, on the internet and it said that when you're born, you're born confident, right? When you're crying as a baby, you just cry out loud. You're not thinking, will my mom feel bad? Will my dad feel bad? Will my brother feel bad, right? You're crying. You're hungry, you cry. You want that, you cry. Or you just ask, like, as a kid, you are born as a confident baby or you're a confident kid. It's a society that puts you in a shell. It's a society that takes you away. So it's not like, how do I build my confidence? It's just that you need to break the shell that you have covered yourself around with because you were born confident. You never stuttered to say what you wanted when you were a child anyway. The school, the parenting style, and a lot of things is what adds layers to your confidence and a layer to, your, to, your, to yourself. Family being one of the things that you start doubting yourself. You constantly are looking at yourself in the mirror. There are beauty standards. What I like about, I feel like, you know, I am born in the right generation. I love wearing makeup and I love putting what I wore and I love seeing other people what they wore and I love sharing things and I love that they're sharing things. It's, it's a generation where you're able to share what you want and speak your mind and everything of that sort, right? What I felt is you had constantly actors or a certain kind of role models mm. that you'd look up to who are exceptionally pretty and amazing thinking that I would only be amazing if I did that, I would only be pretty if I looked like this. I would only be called successful if I made so much money. But it depends on 
people to people, right? So success is different for different people. We start doubting ourselves when we start measuring it to a certain person. But you need to reach to a certain point to see what is success for you. What is the thing for you, right? It starts with your family where you start doubting yourself. Then TVs and commercials and movies add layers right. to it. Right. Then <clears throat> other people talking about it puts a lot of layers to it. I'll tell you one of the things that changed a lot of perspective for me, especially when it came to doubting is it's with other people because from people, from you doubting yourself, now you start concentrating on what other people think of it so much that now everything revolves around people and their validation, right? If a person decides to not like you, let me consider, Shanky, I'm not a fan of you. You can do anything for me. You can get the sun and the moon and the stars. You can do things that I want somebody to do and I would still see you as somebody I don't like. But if I like you, you can hurt me and I would still feel like maybe he did it because of that or because of this. That's what life is. You can be the nicest person on the planet Earth and then there'll be people who'll still not like the way you are or what you do. And there'll be people who love you and no matter what you do, they'll stick to doing what it is. Yeah. So it's not on you. It's on them. Absolutely. They decide what they want to say. And you can't change it. You really can't sit here and wait for people to like you. Is it giving you money? Is it giving you happiness? Is it bringing you joy? It's only putting you into more worry. It's putting you into more uh, place of questioning yourself. And, and it's only making you more doubtful. Why put yourself in a position? Why do, do this to yourself actively when you can just be like, this is what I am. This is what it is. I am born this way. I'm, I'm, I look like this. Can I do something about it? If, I, if you can do something about it, please. If you can't do something about it, why worry why about it? Worry about it? You know, work on things that you can control, not on things that you can't control. You can literally control on how you feel and how you look good. Somebody said this to me as well. Actually, a comment. And it said, the reason you say that is because you look good. You know, you're able to just be like, be yourself, be whatever you are, whatever, whatever. But I actually did not feel confident in how I looked. I hated how I looked, my skin color, how my teeth are, my hair, everything in that matter. Right now, I'm able to stand here and be confident however I am. So I'm like, I like myself. I have no other option. This is how I am. I have to like myself no matter what. Maybe you consider me in the category of being pretty or not. But there are so many other women who are feeling exceptionally amazing so many other men who feel confident in themselves just knowing the fact that i am going to be like this this is what i am i'm just going to look good i'm going to dress good i'm going to feel good i'm going to eat good and nothing about it's going to change for me and i used to firmly believe only people who look good might be feeling this or saying this out loud i have seen so many of them feel exceptionally beautiful in their own skin just because they finally accepted, accepted themselves them. and realized that i am good the way i am Absolutely. again it's a journey it's but it does not start until you decide Absolutely. decide to work on it. Absolutely. So I think to all the people out there who are still underconfident about a lot of things, just to tell you that it's a journey, it's a journey. and you will reach there. It, it starts with you though, but you need to re decide that this is for me. Again, as I keep telling people, not giving you money, not giving you happiness, not giving you joy, not giving you peace, don't invest your time and energy there. That's a beautiful life. It's a smart one, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rida, with this, I think you've inspired, like, a lot of people, Rida. Okay. With that, the place that you've reached right now, I'm sure this is a lot of hard work. Okay, maybe you're just smiling it off and saying, like, nahi, but I know, we know that there's a lot of hard work. So, at this point, do you think you've made it or there is more to go you know uh, I don't want to be very famous Shanky I feel like I'm happy at this point of time not a lot of people know me but enough people know me I'm still able to go to places that I want to go to I'm still able to enjoy with my friends and family I'm still able to live a life that I always so my goal in life was I want to be able to afford things without having to see the price tag Okay, I'm not into luxury big time. I'm not like I need Louis Vuitton or something of that sort. I just want to be able to do day-to-day -day life without thinking twice because I've been there. I've constantly think, I've thought of, my corporate gave me 20K. 5K was my rent. 10K would go to my loan. And 5K is how I sustained the whole month. And I have no clue how I did that. I cannot imagine myself doing it at this point of time. 
because 20k is not even my rent at this point of time right right yeah. and and i realized that if you do put me in that position i probably might survive somehow but i just want to be able to do things for myself without having to worry and think twice about what if i don't have money or what if i don't feel good or something and being able to give my parents what they want and what they want to do yes they might they might be something more i would want to like explore and experiment and just keep going and working on myself but i'm really content and i'm really happy where i've reached because i have i never dreamt of this as a child i never thought i'd be sitting here doing this no, no, no. or i'd be on a camera or i'd be traveling the world or i'll be like figuring all of this out as a child i just didn't want to be forcefully married to someone that i did not want to marry and have children that i did not want to have and i think i've reached a space where i i can choose the kind of partner i want to be with and if i can decide if i want to have kids or not so yes i think i've reached that space i'm content i'm really really happy i am looking forward to what life has to offer next and i constantly want to be working hard towards it but yeah this is the kind of life i always wanted and i'm living that there's one thing with i want to again tell you that when you see when i see rida online okay like the rida who is there on instagram <laughs> on my feed okay and this rida i feel so connected <laughs> oh you this is this rida is only because you have a set of questions oh my god i am extremely dumb at times and extremely bitchy at times as well my friends all <laughs> my sisters and my even josh i kept saying this and even huda and rp and a lot of people keep saying this you are like the cockiest person i was like i get to be me with you guys that you is know? absolutely <laughs> what people want right like that is what i'm saying like right now when i talk to you i feel so connected <laughs> that this is the rida i wanted to also know i love that rida who i've been seeing for years online but when you get to know this rida I think it is just the beauty you know like it just gets everything in one picture oh, yeah. from where you've come why you, meant- you do this what you do here yeah. and then you mentioned your first goal was only to move to bangalore yeah. you never imagined that you would grow as a content creator not at all you moved to bangalore you started doing things for you you've dated <laughs> shittiest guys i would i don't want to say that You've dated. No, no, one of them was really nice. Yeah, exactly. Like you've dated yeah, good guys as well. Yeah, the long distance ones also we are like friends right now, so it's yeah. not in a bad term though. And you've dated good guys as well. You Okayish guys. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you've been through all of it. You've seen you've taken all the bad comments from the people. You've taken good comments from the people. You've inspired people and now you are here. And I j- it just feels I feel so proud that because I think every middle class family or a person who comes from a middle class family has that kind of a dream you know i'll say one thing what i like that i really so I, I, when i started off even not not as a content creator when i started off and i came to bangalore one of the things that that i wanted was i just want to be able to do enough that my parents can send my sisters here so that they know that the girls can work too and they can do it too and and i i i don't understand this like there's a lot of things i like feminism has changed that feminism has changed this and uh, we want the old lifestyle living and i'm like baby girl feminism is is freedom of choice you're giving freedom of choice to for a woman to choose what she wants yeah. and i'll tell you why we are three dif- we are three girls and all three of us are extremely different i am somebody who loves what i do like i'm into videos and i love traveling and that this and all of it my second sister is a family oriented person she wants to she's working as of now but she's like you know i eventually want to settle down and have babies and i really can't wait to be an aunt and spoil yes. her kids <laughs> my third one is still figuring it out she wants to know what's happening or not and everything so that's all right now i feel like if, and all three of us believe in feminism and all three of us are raised this way i don't see them in any way i don't feel like oh you're not ambitious or you're not that you're not this i'm like if if that's what you want you need to go for that if that's what's going to what's going to make you happy you need to do this it's literally freedom of choice all i wanted was my girls to come out of that place and decide for themselves if that's what they want to do with their life that's your choice to make that's what you want to do if that's what makes you happy this is for you and this is what you have to do but what i like about is my family as well at least my mom's side of family uh my dad's side of family so there are so many young younger girls than i am and my sisters are and all of their parents are like look so they call me tito back home so like oh. look at tito api she's doing that you have to thrive to be this that's a nickname you have to yeah you have to be independent <laughs> like her and what i like is like their lives might have also been same as their their mothers like okay get them married and they settle down now just because i am doing good and i'm i'm doing well they are all pushed to be like 
try this out for yourself why don't you give this a shot and they all have a different set of dreams like if titu didi can do do this do then it. i can I do it too that is beautiful so with your family as well from not letting you go out of your own city to now where you're fucking killing it how does it feel really baby girl money changes a lot of things <laughs> 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 see i keep telling this out of all of this also let me just tell you uh this confidence all of this is also big bec- whoever's telling money does not bring you happiness this is a lie it gives you accessibility to things that you never thought is possible okay it has given me a direction of life i never thought was there it has opened opportunities for me that i never thought i could tap on i have gotten love from my family and i'm not saying that now yes we have been way more understanding but from being able to gift my dad a car to getting my mom she's into gold and i love getting her gold into her gold i i can say that maybe i might have like somehow bought things for them to just get get it but i i don't care i'm really really happy that they are able to get what they want to get mm-hmm. and we are we are still now that we are able to talk very openly and communicate very openly our relationship has gotten so much better mm-hmm. i can tell that 3 4 months behind this if the whole world stood up against me my, my parents also would stand up with them and be like yeah my daughter's wrong but i feel like now that my relationship with them has gotten better that they might be like this is my daughter and i want to stand up for her it's my it has gotten better but money does change a lot of these things okay I'm not saying just relationship wise yes it has but the accessible accessibility that has that I have gotten in terms of this it the freedom that I have gotten when it comes to being able to give what I want to give to my family and as well as the things oh my god it changes so much people don't really teach you this they don't really tell you this right. they just like oh make enough to like survive and sustain no mm. make much more <laughs> so you're able to live the kind of dream life that you always wanted to live absolutely but easier said than done <laughs> but do it <laughs> and to anyone who says money cannot bring you happiness just it's trans- a lie it's a lie and please transfer your amount to my bank account right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> <laughs> so i think what you said makes so much sense arida uh, i think money definitely definitely your family as well like you know if you realized every time the reason they change perspective about you and a lot of things is also when you start making good money I'll tell you my personal experience with her in this way. Today, touch wood, my mom. So I'm supposed to get married. Okay. Are you? Yeah. I'm like I'm supposed my mom is behind me. Oh, you're not. Okay. Okay. Like that, my mom is also behind yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. Though. Like I'm supposed. I mean, like my mom wants me to get married as soon as possible. But I get so excited when somebody's like married. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> like in my life, I have no idea when, but I'm just so 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 happy when I know that somebody's getting married. So, yeah. Like, so my oh, mom is someone. very excited. for my marriage again my eldest brother is married oh. my sister is married now it's me so we have five brothers one sister basically oh my god okay so we have four yeah i know that that's why i can relate to you so much the, from the whole family situation so now my mother touch wood she doesn't say a word to me Same. she doesn't say a word i'll tell you the only reality is because my eldest brother is working okay she's doing well for himself my sister she's married she's in himachal my younger brother again they are working here and there. she has seen me from scratch whatever i've done today it's from my own money oh. wherever i've reached from zero till here i started my small business i take workshops whatever they haven't paid me a penny same and same. that is why they don't say anything to me same thing with me with me also like i think after i took the loan i stopped taking the loan at 2 lakhs okay and then i started paying my own fees i took my sister's education my i don't my father never asked me if i needed it and he never really sent me money i never asked them either and i have this rule though i really will not ask money from anyone if i have to get something and it requires me asking money from somebody because i don't have that i'll not get that thing but i will not ask money from anyone and if i did by any chance i will have to send it right in like an hour or like exactly. as soon as possible because the, the idea of i having taken the money from you eats me up so much but yeah you're right but imagine this as a older daughter i'm the oldest and i'm not married and my parents have stopped asking me to get married and i'm just like 
that's I mean, an just, achievement. Yeah, just recently she. So I mean, there, there was a conversation though, and I was like, okay, let's consider that you want me to get. There was this one time. So out of nowhere, actually, last year, November, December, I guess, some somewhere there, my dad was just like, I think you need to start thinking about marriage. I don't understand why you're not considering this at all. You said you wanted to work. You're working, and uh, give me a minute. Yeah, you said you wanted to work. You're doing. You're working. You're doing exceptionally good for yourself. So I don't understand why you're not doing. What? Why are you just not getting married? And I was like, I don't have a man. Firstly. <laughs> Second, you find one for me, and then they send me. I was like, okay, can you <laughs> send me somebody? Come on, look at you and mom. You you both have found each other, and you both look exceptionally amazing. I don't understand. You're just randomly sending, sending men for it, is it? <laughs> then I was like, okay, let's do this. As you want me to get married, choose whoever you want me to get married, and I will get. No, then they were like, come here and talk. I said, I'm not gonna come here and talk. If he wants, he'll come to Bangalore and talk. It does not work that way. It will work that way work because that. you want me to marry. I don't want to marry. So if you want me to marry in your terms, then you have to figure out and understand some of my terms. And then they were like, uh, okay, fine. Then and you have to tell him that I'm in Bangalore. I'll not be moving to the city where he's moving. He has to move in here, or he can live in his city. I can live in my city. That is also completely fine with me. Perfect. They're like, that's not how things work. I said. I mean, come on! You want me to marry, isn't it? <laughs> then I was like, okay, let's do this. You find whoever you want me to marry. I'll marry in next one month, but I'll also get a divorce if even there's the slightest of inconvenience. Right, right. And then they were like, that's not how marriages work. I know that's not how marriages work. But you're not giving me time to think. You're not giving me time to find a partner. You're not even giving me time to like go through anything. So I will give you the joy of being married. But are you ready? to also take the take away i'll take away your joy of being married by getting a divorce so do you want to want me to be known as a married woman or do you want me to be known as a woman who's divorced divorced they stopped after that wow <laughs> that is a beautiful hack at <laughs> stop that but i think i i see the same thing i thought we like find it i'm ready to marry <laughs> and then then they're just like that means there's something up the sleeve <laughs> if she said that then this definitely this not going easy <laughs> so rida for you when we talk about marriage and when we talk about the right person for rida the right man for rida who is that <laughs> <laughs> i don't so i don't have i don't see myself being married at least for like 4 5 years okay and i don't see my i don't know i don't have the feeling i don't feel like i'm losing out most of my friends are married most of the friends are engaged most of my friends are having babies and i'm like really really happy for them most of the people below my age are also getting engaged married and i'm really happy for them but i actively don't feel that way as i said i'm single so i'm not really looking for anyone either <laughs> but see what i realized is i'm actually a dominant person when it comes to relationship so now what has happened with me is because i'm dominant submissive men find me very attractive because you know i yeah. take the charge yeah. i know what to do i know what not to do i'm planning the dates i'm getting the flowers i'm doing what it is i'm deciding everything so it's just easy for them because that's what they always wanted they always wanted yeah. somebody to take care of it right Then I realized, like, I need somebody who's slightly dominant, very little, not a lot. So somebody who knows to switch between switch. submissive and dominant, because exactly. I can switch between submissive and dominant as well. But what's happening is we either have submissive, or we have extremely dominant. And with extremely dominant men, the problem is they are like, how can you say that? They want to be dominant all the time. And because I've been this independent older daughter who's done everything for myself since the beginning, it already takes a lot for me to put down my guard. And I'm already like, how dare you Absolutely. say that to me? Or how dare you ask me? Absolutely. From my father doesn't talk to me that way. You know, my father is afraid of of saying something. Like even if there's something that happens, my sisters ask something to my father, my dad's mad. and then they're like wait let me call didi didi is going to he's going to fix it i'm just like what is happening daddy is like yeah, yeah yeah it's fine it's fine it's okay let it go my mom i'm afraid of my mom but i'm not afraid of my father okay and then and and then i'm just like that's what i realized and then i then i'm like okay i'm not going to actively look for it i'll eventually just realize but then i'm i'm somebody who's understand basics you somebody who's understanding somebody who's not intimidated by me somebody who's happy with themselves somebody who's decisive for themselves they're doing good for themselves their identity is not me my identity is not them i don't want that to happen right, right, they're doing right, amazing right. i'm doing amazing equally nice we're able to communicate better there's no ego clash and there's no competitiveness and if that's been working out i think we're good to go good to but that's the problem that i'm facing i'm either finding extremely submissive or submissive or i'm finding extremely dominant <laughs> and i'm just like oh god this is going to be a hard but i think rita when you fall in love right when the right person enters your life you will just know you i think love is that beautiful thing that no baby girl you're blind no oh, i no <laughs> love is that beautiful you just get to know it since how you just i mean the right person will never make you feel the other way see the thing is most of the 
I will tell you, I've I've realized that I don't think the love of my life is in India anymore. Oh, great! Okay, I think that is a good good, good <laughs> way to answer. Okay, <laughs> because most of these people know me, so they pretend to be the right person for the longest time possible. I've known relationships that have been for like six years, and then they figure out red flags. So to be frank, I really don't believe in this. Like the minute the right person walks in, you'll get to know efforts. I've- Definitely yes. Like if a person is actively putting in efforts, that's when I feel like maybe this person really wants to be there. But now I've realized I don't know the last time I've been on a date. Okay, uh, at least not with an Indian guy. Oh, okay, wow. and I'm just I realize that either they don't know me, but then eventually some of their friends or somebody gets to know me, and then, and then they pretend to be what it is that I want to offer to that thing or the or extreme. Okay, right, right. so I was telling my mom it's like maybe it's either in Italy or in France or wow. in Turkey. Wow. <laughs> They're probably here. My mom's just like, I'm so done of this girl. <laughs> but just kidding around. I feel like maybe here also, I don't know. But somebody who's mature enough to know that I just don't want the person to be intimidated. I might come off intimidating. I'm not saying that I'm not. But I, when it comes to relationships, as you're right. But the thing is, we are also, there's a sense of emotions and the sense of um, attachment and there's, there's a sense of quick connection that exactly. you find with those people. Yes. You lose your sanity then and there. Yeah. So when you lose your sanity then and there, no, even if they're not the right person, you want them, them to, to be, be the right, right person, person so much that you think that they are the right person for the longest time. That's the problem. That makes so much sense. Yeah, I am. I know. <laughs> every every other person who's in love, I, I am telling you to all of my girls that I keep telling as well. I'm like, see, I'm happy that you guys are there. They always do things that's like extremely wrong, and then they end up in like the worst position possible right. ever. And I don't really correct them. See, I'm not somebody who's preachy. Until and unless you ask me questions, I will not be opening my mouth. I'm a very different person on online and I'm a very different person offline. If you meet me like for a cup of coffee or something, yeah, we'll yeah. be talking about something extremely different. I'm not teaching you about all mm-hmm. of these things. We are not talking about what is love what or anything love, yeah. of that sort, right? So even with my girls and my boys, when they're doing good, when they reach out for advice is the only time I'd, I'd actively tell that. Otherwise, I'm like, it's your life. It's your lesson. Fall, get up, learn. Or is there's no way life's going to be interesting. I'm not going to be teaching you and helping you and preaching. But that's my sisters also. Make your own life decisions. Yeah. Make your own falls. Yeah. Make your own tumbles. Learn from yourself. Yeah. I don't want to be the shield that's protecting you all the time. I think that and that is the best way to learn in life. Oh, true. Okay, so Rida, with that, I have a very interesting round for you. Okay. It's called rapid fire round. <laughs> <laughs> I think this round is just made for you. You are excited now. So these are again rapid fire rounds. Whatever answer comes to your head. Okay, I have to be just very quick with it. With just be quick with it. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Let's go. <laughs> One reason your ex is your ex. Oh my god! I, how do I say this extremely fast? Okay. The reason my ex is my ex is because. This is not easy. I can't even think of why my ex is my ex. Is it my fault or is it their fault? I'm confused. Their fault. Okay. The reason my ex is my ex is because they're a piece of shit. <laughs> okay. One thing about women that men need to know. Uh, one thing about women, if they say no, trust me, anything that you change or do will not. Like take no as a no. And it takes a lot for a woman to say no. So if she's saying no, she knows what she's doing. It's a no. That's a strong statement. What's one meanest thing someone has ever told you? Oh, somebody just commented under my post saying that uh, you don't just have an ugly personality. You're ugly too. It's not mean because I know I'm not ugly. I'm like, okay, personality, fine, whatever you say. I'm not ugly. But then yeah, I was just like, how can you be this mean? How are you taking time out to just hate on me? So there are multiple things on the internet that's like very mean. Right. Uh, but yeah, maybe this because I'm like mm, not my looks. <laughs> don't come. <laughs> absolutely <there." laughs> not. Absolutely not. What's one mistake from the past you don't want to repeat again? Uh, ignore the early signs of red flags only eventually for it to grow and then have my heart massively broken. Three red flags. Three red flags is okay. Firstly, Mama's boy. <laughs> any day <laughs> mama's boy any day a person who's only saying and speaking things out but never ever is putting any actions um and the last red flags that i feel is extremely dominant is if at all they raise their voice even slightly once absolutely. um it's not gonna go well absolutely perfect you are on television Rida. okay and the whole of the world is looking at you what would you tell all of them I, as I as I told you, 
ladies and gentlemen, just one thing that you always have to remember: anything that you're investing your time and energy on, anything that's draining your time and energy or yourself, remember. can you change it do you have a control over it if it's not bringing you happiness joy peace or a sense of comfort or money don't put yourself there beautiful okay if you had to date which one influencer or an actor would you <laughs> <laughs> so i have a very strict rule okay i don't date people from the same Let's go. If I'm here in this locality, I'll not be dating anybody from the same locality. Okay. If I'm da- if I'm an influencer, I'm not dating another influencer. Okay. If I'm dating, uh, if I'm in, the, in a company, I'm not dating anybody from the same company. Even in the college, I never dated That's anybody right. from the same college. Yeah. So I don't think I'll be dating an influencer. But if it has to be an actor, I think I would love to date. Everybody's married, yo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Nobody's left anymore. But uh, I think if it's an actor, um, I would like to date Tom oh. Holland. Yeah, oh. I, I like the way he hypes Zendaya. It's cute. Wow. <laughs> I mean, is, we're not. Yeah, that is very cute. <laughs> He's cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you could eliminate one thing from this world, what would that be? Um, I've seen. Me, I've. been at a place where i think you know i've been at a place where i've worked my ass off to even get that 20000 or something of that sort even now out of nowhere i just feel like how much would the swiggy guy be making or how much you know how much is this person making or if i see a stall i'm like are they doing and living enough i think one thing i would just really eradicate is a sense of A- people able to afford basic things and them able to ma- make money without having to go through extreme conditions to make the basic just to live a life as i feel everybody equally has to live something like some basic amount that everybody needs to get regardless of what job you do oh, wow so something like that not eradicate to get something in I, wow what is the most overrated thing in the world skinny jeans <laughs> <laughs> I am so happy right now. I'm so happy right now. I'm not wearing a skinny jeans. <laughs> Don't trust me. I'm just very happy right now. <laughs> What's that one thing most people don't know about you? Uh, a lot of thing that a lot of people don't know about me is I'm actually a very I hold grudges. You do. But uh, it's not. very often it's not like every other person a person has to put put me through a lot if i have to hold a grudge on you i'm usually a forgive forget get off i don't care it's fine ah kind of person but if you have to hurt me like to that extent i hold grudges and i really i become a very cold person a very cold person so the kindness and and the love and everything that i have if it's something that you've done extremely terrible to me i take that away from you in like a blink of a second and and you're just like is this the same rida and i oh, and i really i'm working on it but yeah i back up become extremely cold if i if i hold grudge on you i would never want that <laughs> <laughs> okay what's the weirdest dm you've ever received a dick pic are you serious what is are you serious come on every other girl you call in they'll they'll have a dick pic what the fuck what is wrong with people <laughs> okay <laughs> another one is this guy used to always tag me on his close friend stories with an underwear and i don't know why <laughs> he just Tagged can't like this and he, yeah in his close friend list though i blocked him then his underwear i really did not feel like taking a screenshot and shaming him is like what if it's not the other that person it's somebody else yeah. and you know there somebody is using somebody's picture i don't know why i was i don't know why i did that though but uh, it was this one guy wearing like a like an underwear and then standing like this <laughs> and like multiple stories you're talking about oh, twice it happened twice oh my god oh. Guys, there are better things to do. <laughs> okay, this is important question for all the people out there. Okay, is Rida single? Obviously, you are single. <laughs> is Rida ready to mingle? I am not ready to mingle. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people 
who who i think would be ready to mingle yeah but i'm just like i am so afraid that i might end up hurting them that i'm like mm, until and unless i'm not 100% sure i really do not want to be the person who's like okay let's just give this a shot i don't even say that i don't even put myself in situations ships and i don't even put myself in a position where i'm like let's just give this a shot because i actively know that i'm not at a place where i can i can be there so not ready to mingle <laughs> and rida before we leave and before we end this podcast This is the last question for you Riza. There are a lot of youngsters, a lot of elders who are watching you right now. Okay. We are all so inspired from where you've come to what you are today and to wherever you are moving ahead from here. So a lot of us are also trying to achieve our dreams, trying to not only our dreams but maybe trying to move out of those toxicity that maybe we are in right now. one message to all of them that they can start working on or something um don't measure your success with somebody else you know don't look up to me and feel like the only time i will be successful is if i'm able to reach these numbers or if i'm able to re- reach the level that this person has reached or something your success is different from my success if you are happy staying at home um and having a family and you feel that's a successful life good for you if you are somebody who wants to work make money travel and that's successful life for you good for you but try to understand what success is instead of comparing it with other people around you're just going to make it harder for yourself because life is beautiful and it's in and it's amazing when you're able to love it the way it loves you as well it does not have to be complicated it does not have to be amazing you can do little things with whatever you have because i was saying while i was making 20k also i was happy happy i never knew i could make more but as i was making that i was still happy i was still living my life i was still going out i was still doing things yes maybe here and there i would have figured it out in a lesser way or you know in a in another way but i was still happy so don't measure your success to people around and feel like you're not doing enough you're doing more than enough and if you're content if you're happy just make sure that you're just doing better for yourself every step you take every decision you make it is not for another person or another being or to feel to make another person feel good or prove yourself but to but for yourself right put yourself first love starts with you love ends with you i still believe in love i still believe if you believe there are people for you definitely there are people for you if you feel, believe that you're the one for you you're the one for you're you one. if you feel low right now everybody has a low there's this one thing let's consider low as a black dot today tomorrow it's a f- okay day which is slightly whatever then you have like fine and then you have white days this black day or whatever is going to be a part of your whole month where you'll be like that day i was sad right. but today i'm feeling much better take in your emotions feel like if you want to cry you cry you want to feel happy you feel happy don't be scared to be happy because you think something bad is going to happen tomorrow but don't hold yourself and don't cry thinking that you know i'm i'm going to be a weak person your emotions are to be felt and let the emotions be felt in ways it has to be felt you'll figure it out in whatever ways you've been put out that's how life is that's how everybody's personalized and mechanized to be made as you know you're you're meant to do something in this way take life in a way that is beneficial for you instead of making it complicated and making it hard for you for yourself wow i think with this is the most beautiful thing to end the podcast with and again before i leave uh, i had to say this that rida you have also inspired me okay been sitting here trying to do things and and you're doing exceptionally well thank you a <laughs> lot coming from you because again i started from nowhere and with whatever and wherever i am right now i'm just so grateful i think one thing also that people need to be very should understand that you should be grateful, grateful. about it i think the reason we feel this very closely is because we know we've come from nothing we've come from zero we have the fear of going back to zero and hence we are grateful for every little thing that Absolutely. comes our way we're always like do we are we you might be worthy of it but you're all constantly like am i worthy of it oh my god this is the question but that... you are worthy of it yes. just remember that you yes. know you you you're not chosen for nothing you know you are worthy of it you're worthy of love you're worthy of attention you're worthy of time you're worthy of accomplishment you're worthy of success and don't see yourself otherwise but yes when we come from nothing we're constantly constantly either told that don't forget we never forget our roots but we are yeah. always told don't forget we are your roots told. 
you even know? today you don't have to fly up high you never know when you're going to come down you'll not be seeing this to every other person out there right. so don't it's okay you can fly up above you can still be grateful for everything you can still have your roots you can still come down and nest at places where you're comfortable at so don't don't be afraid to fly high don't be afraid to break barriers and don't be af- afraid to be more and be too much for people that think too less is like if if i am too much for you then you're not for me yeah. find somebody who's less because right. I really don't right. want to be at a place where I want to get comfortable. So if if I'm intimidating you, I come from a space where you have put yourself in a position where you feel like this is what it is. I'm not going to be changing to make yourself comfortable, right. make you comfortable. Definitely. You need to figure out a way to get out of your cocoon to make yourself comfortable enough around other people to stand out and to be able to have a conversation and speak. Great. So <clears throat> with that, thank you so much Raza. Thank you for having for me. coming here and lighting this space for all of us and i'm just waiting for all your followers to come to this video <laughs> and comment because i'm just waiting for those comments because i i need all the hearts and all the kisses <laughs> and all the hugs in the comments where these people are the love of my life to be frank is like do i believe in love yes i do i have them <laughs> yeah, absolutely so thank you so much rita thank you for having with me with this again. we are done with the podcast and Thank you so much until next time sayonara this is meera dadrana signing off so i hope you've enjoyed this podcast and you've learned something from this podcast don't hesitate to tell us in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe to our beautiful channel the back story and yes as i keep saying it if you are a creator if you are a brand if you are looking for a podcast studio or a studio to shoot your videos don't forget to text tape fox studios which is in indira nagar bangalore until then see you next time